Come on, let the church say amen. amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I need you to act like you're glad to be here this morning. Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. Say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Are you with me? If, he breathed, if if God breathed breath in your lungs this morning, then he breathed the breath in your lungs, and you can give him praise. Will you can exalt his name. You to allow the world to know that you serve a good God, that you serve a God that sits high and low, that you serve a God that has all power in his hands. And matter of fact, since he gave you another minute, why don't you just go ahead? I need somebody to put their hands together. We're going to get ourselves in a good place here in a minute. We're going to make sure that we let God know how much we love him and appreciate him. We want to thank him for waking us up, clothing us in our right frame of mind, giving us the activities of our limbs. We looked up this morning, there was a roof over our head, we went in the refrigerator, there was food to eat, there was some clothes in the closet, there was some shoes in the closet. Have I got a witness here? You flipped the switch and the lights came on. Have I got a witness? And then you got out in your car, you got out in your car, you turned it and it came on and you drove down the street. Not only did you drive down the street, but it kept you free from danger seen and unseen. Have I got a witness? And then when you got here, he said, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. When you got here, he was already here. So therefore, we ought to make sure that when we lift up our voice, that he understands that he's worthy of our... Y'all might say he didn't got up radical already. Well, 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 guess what? Like I shared with y'all about a year ago, the doctor said I wasn't supposed to be here. So every chance I get, I said, I'm going to let it all hang out every chance. You know why? I, I come to terms to realize this. Folks is checking out of here. My, my son said folks is dying out and they never died before. <laughs> He said, hey, but, but we know folks is checking out young, old, and in between. Are you listening? They dying with no health conditions. They just dying and leaving here. And I don't know about you, but I said every opportunity I get, I'm going to lose my mind for Jesus because it may be the last time that I can. And when he comes back, I want him to look at me and say, you laid it all out on the field. Well done. Not good and faithful service. Have I got a witness here? Yes. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. Yes. And uh, I know he's doing some awesome things. And, yes. and I want y'all to understand something real quick. I want y'all to know. And I'm, I'm, the, I'm one of the biggest testimonies that, that you can use for this particular thing. When God has an assignment for you, and the assignment that he's given you has the potential to be something great. Amen. The enemy has a way of making sure mm -hmm. that you stay busy. Hallelujah. I've got a witness. And the crazy part about it is sometimes we'll be busy thinking that we're glorifying God. But God says much ain't mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. because he's not worried about how much you do. He's concerned about the quality of what it is that you do. And if you stay too busy, how can you give your focus to what is the assignment if you're so busy doing everything else and really helping somebody else fulfill their assignment? Amen. 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 When God judges you, he may sit back and say, all that you did was good. But did you do what I asked you to do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. I ain't talking. I'm talking to myself this morning. I, I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. Because when I wake up and I think about what I didn't get a chance to get done, then I think about everything that did get done, then I ask, was that a part of my assignment? Amen. You know, and, and, and I, I'm tired of getting stripes on my arms from men. Because they ain't got no way to get so we got to learn how to start telling folk no. Come on up and hear somebody. If you don't fit the parameters of my assignment, I love you, but not that much. So I got to miss God. Have I got a witness? Amen. 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 Yes, let us be mindful about our Wednesday night Bible study as we are journeying through the book of James. Amen. Amen. And there are a whole lot of so we're taking our time to go through James. As a matter of fact, we were supposed to do three verses Wednesday night. I think we got to two. Amen. But that just lets you know that it's a lot of information 
in the scriptures and we move over them so fast that the stuff we really need, we, we leave it there and keep going. Amen. We, we, let's get as much of it out, out of it as we can. Amen. And then can I share something with you? It's, it's funny because when a teacher or a pastor or a preacher is coming to teach you and he spends time or she spent time studying, you'll be amazed at how much they learn even though they're teaching you. Amen. Because God will give you revelation about some stuff that you ain't never even paid attention to. Amen. So let us be mindful of that. Amen. Again, um, we had a funeral service to do yesterday, and it last, I was 8 o'clock yesterday morning to open up. And I was 9 o'clock last night coming back home. Okay. Wow. <laughs> they did the service of the repast, and then, <laughs> Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. But, uh, they put her away well. They sent her home well. That's great. Amen. But it, it held up some of my day. Yeah. But, uh, but God, Thank God. bless me to see another day so I'm still here. Amen. 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 So we'll make sure that we get those things done. See there, we are, God has us on the move now. And I want you to, I want you to remember something. If you don't see results you want to see instantaneously, it doesn't mean that God is not moving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What happens is if he moves you too too fast, he'll move us too fast and we'll still miss what we should have in the process of moving forward. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So he has to make sure that we don't put stuff and things and people before him, but that we are completely sold out and that it's evidence that he is our all in all. Amen. Amen. So that when he does add, Others can come and see what it looks like to be sold out for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have we got a witness? Amen. Amen. So let's just be with a mind of servanthood, with a heart of rejoicing, and a spirit of being willing to be used. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Why don't you meet me over in Psalms 34? Today I'm going to start a series in the 34th number of Psalms. I'm going to start a series because David was saying a lot. But I want us to understand it. Is that all right? Amen. So for our day one of our series, we're just going to look at verse number one. Psalms 34 and one. When you have a please rest to your feet. And then I'm going to show you what's amazing about this is yesterday while I was at the service, um, after the service was over the repast, I received a phone call. And the phone call was, was, was asking me about um, clearing up something that was, that someone, you know, we all say things sometimes. And sometimes we say things without really understanding the magnitude of what we say that way. And not have no understanding about what we said, but yet we want to influence our misunderstanding on somebody else. Have we got a, have we got a witness? Amen. And it's so interesting because in the middle of the studying and, and, and the straightening out notes, uh, one of the things that, that's pertinent for what he asked is right here. And then when I finish later, I'll tell you the other part of that. Amen. Amen. But, but right now in, in, in Psalms 34 and 1, um, I want y'all to read that with me. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I want us to read that one more time, because I'm going to share some stuff with you about this right here. Let's do it again. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mind. For our series subject, we're going to use praising my way through. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we got to learn how to praise our way through. Amen. Father, speak now. All of you, none of me, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. David said, I will bless the Lord 
at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What I found to be interesting when I began to look at this in a different way, because see, See, growing up in church, we hear these scriptures all the time. Yeah. Amen. And then what winds up happening is we, we wind up putting them in our wallet of clichéism. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? Amen. But it, it, we, we put it in our wallet of remembering those scriptures that are easy mm -hmm. and they sound good, yeah. especially when somebody's going through something. Amen. Uh, 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. We say those things where if God be for us, who can be against us? Because they're cliches. They sound good. Are you listening? We say things that we, 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 we say those things that that that, that uh, 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 God is my strength and my salvation. To whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Yes. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I, I just, and we say these things without really, 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 really researching what it is that caused the writer to even write it in the first place. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. If I can tell you that when an author writes a book, he doesn't write a book based off of things that make you feel good. But he writes a book based off of things that have happened and his research has got information so that he can explain what he's writing, why he's writing, and who he's trying to capture in the midst of his writing. Yeah. Now we got a witness. Yes, so the writers of the word of the Bible are the same way. They have to make sure that they let you know that, that you identify with what they're talking about when they are writing. And there was a reason why David wrote, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He didn't just say that because, oh, well, he woke up one morning and God said, baby, get up. Hallelujah. And so he decided I'm going to write this song. But yet it was something that caused his pencil to begin to eloquently write upon a piece of paper because there was something that he needed to share with somebody about somebody. Hallelujah. Have I got a Hallelujah. This is what got me when God was sharing this with me. Because he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. But my question was, how do you bless somebody who holds all the blessings? Hallelujah, hallelujah. How do you bless somebody that has all the blessings? He controls all the blessings. He is the blessing. So how do we bless the maker and the creator because we don't, he don't, if he don't give it, we don't have it. Amen, amen. Well, I wish I had somebody in here this morning. <laughs> and then the question came was, well, what is his praise? Mm -hmm. Because I, we've never seen him, so if we've never seen him, then how do we know what his praise is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> It's something to make you think. Have, have, have I got a witness? Yeah, what is God's praise? Mm. And what is so good about his praise, his praise, that's got to be in my mouth all the time? Come on, help me over here. Hallelujah. So as I begin to research this, I find some things out that are interesting. Listen, our blessings, which we receive from God, are often misunderstood. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach something today. If I, if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to teach you. If I don't hoop, then it's okay. Uh -huh. But I'm going to show you something today. Is it all right? Yeah. Our blessings, which we receive from God, often are misunderstood. See, most of the time we may think that we receive it because we did something great, and it's God's way of encouraging us. Amen, amen. A lot of times we receive blessings, the first thing we want to do is we want to revert back to what we did that caused God to bless us. Mm. Just because you gave the man a 7-Eleven a dollar to get a hot dog that was on sale anyway, Hallelujah. don't mean that that puts you in line for God to bless you. Hallelujah. Simply because God's blessings are not predicated on what you do and being so good, but God's blessings are predicated on who he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Listen to this. Let me 
share this simple fact. God's blessings upon us are wholly undeserved and are given merely by his grace and his mercy. Amen, amen. <laughs> God's blessings is not because of what you did. God's blessings are because of who he is and because of his grace and mercy. And do we understand the extent of what grace and mercy is? Grace is giving you stuff that you don't deserve. As mercy is keeping you from the punishment of the stuff that you do deserve. So isn't it amazing that when God extends grace, he's blessing you for something that you're not even in a spirit or in a mindset or in a place to even receive, but because of his grace and mercy, because of his faithfulness to us, he will give you these things and it's a way to motivate you to continue to trust in him. Yes. But the blessings that you get are no way something that you deserve. Amen, amen. Do you deserve a new house? Not really. Do you deserve the new car? Of course not. Do you deserve to have that six-figure-a-year job? Surely you don't. But the reason he gives it to you is because the Bible says that he would rather see you prosper than to see you suffer lack. But the thing is, when he says in his word that he understands how we are motivated and how we are moved, so he gives to us based on a measure based off of what we have the propensity to be able to handle. So he's not going to give you more money if you can't handle the little money that you got. He's not going to give you a bigger house if you can't take care of the little house that you got. He's not going to give you more faith if you can't even use the faith that you have. But because of grace and mercy, he'll still allow things to happen to show you that he's still God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yes. <laughs> so when we look at this, we find out that blessed is translated through the Hebrew or praise, it literally means to kneel. Mm. I think I'm moving. I'm a little heavy this morning. Am I, am I heavy? Am I heavy this morning? Uh, Reverend John, help me out a little bit. Just wink at me and tell me, hey, you're walking heavy. You're walking heavy, Reverend. <laughs> I just love it, not when I need it, because I know God gave us to me, so it's all right. Listen, so to bless God, or to bless, or to praise, it literally means, through the Hebrew translation, to kneel. It's the implication being to kneel in worship. So when I bless God, listen, I bless him in the way that I position myself, yes. and I bless him in the way that I give of myself, especially while I'm kneeling. Amen, amen. Because when I kneel, I'm almost in a submissive position because God lets us know that the best position for us to submit ourselves in is to lay prostate. Amen. But every once in a while, you can't lay flat out like an eagle. So when you kneel down on your knees, you are letting God know in my kneeling that this kneeling is a look, it is a, 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 a submission. Hallelujah. As I kneel to him, I submit to a power that is greater than me. I submit to someone that is worthy of me submitting. So when I kneel in prayer, mm. when I kneel in my worship, when I kneel, and you don't have to always be leaning down to kneel. You can kneel in your spirit. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Because kneeling just simply means a state of submission. Come on in here, somebody. Hallelujah. So now we realize that to bless the Lord simply means to praise Him, Hallelujah. to exalt Him, and to worship Him. When we look at the Psalms, we find that the Psalms are full with blessings upon God. Mm -hmm. We look at Psalms 16 and 7, we bless Him for His counsel. When we look at Psalms 103 and 1, we look at, we bless Him for His holiness. When we look at Psalms 103 and 22, we bless him for his dominion over all things. When we look at Psalms 104 and 1, we bless, we bless him for his honor and his majesty. Amen. But when you look at it all, David blessed him because of something that David was going through or what David just came out of. But we offer him our praise and our blessings because he deserves them. Unlike our blessing God 
It's not done out of an understanding that he is the true and praiseworthy creator and our heavenly God. Watch this. But you cannot bless God in the wrong state of mind. God is glorified when we bless and we praise and we acknowledge him. The acknowledgement comes in the form of praise, adoration, thanksgiving, and love. Watch. And that is extended to those that we are encounter with all of the time. I bless God by the way I love you. I bless God by the way I praise him. I bless God by the way I am available to help someone else. I bless God by the words of life that I speak into the life of somebody else. I bless God in the way I sing songs from my heart. I bless God as I go and feed the homeless. I bless God when I give somebody a pair of shoes. I bless God. Are you listening to me? Because the least that I do unto these his people, I do also unto him. So when I do, when I make myself a blessing to his people, I bless him. Amen. 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 See, but when we read this, we think I'll bless the Lord at all times. We think that it's just a matter of us being so holy, so sanctified. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, uh, that ain't gonna get it, baby, because you can jump around and say hallelujah all you want and still be the biggest devil on this side of heaven. But blessing God is in your service. Blessing God is in your mindset. Blessing God is in your sacrifice. Blessing God is in your servanthood. Blessing God is in your willingness. Blessing God. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. When God is happy, he's happy because we put ourselves in a position to honor him in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. You can't bless God drinking Yaggy Kong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at me, look at that. I just called the actor a bit right there. <laughs> because he said he don't want you indulging in them heavy drinks, the strong drinks. Are you listening to me? You can't bless God. You can't get drunk and tell people how good God is because I'm going to let you know something. There are people who are not in your circle, but that are looking at your circle that will understand that the way you live and the way you talk does not line up with who he is the one you're talking about. So now you're not blessing me, but you're pushing me away from who can. Because the average person will say, if this is blessing God, I'd rather stay out here because it's less responsibility being out here because as long as I don't know better, I'm not accountable for doing better. And if you in the church preacher, if you in the church deacon, if you in the church usher is living a double life, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not blessing God, but yet you are pronouncing curses upon yourself for playing with God. So, so we look at this. This is what we was originally created for. We were created to bless the Lord. Mm. We were created as vessels of praise. We were created for the purpose of worship. Mm. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So since we know that that's how we were created or what we were created for, man himself can bless God. He cannot, no man can bless God in this way unless he is right with God. Yeah. For we look at Proverbs 21 and 9 and it says, if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law, even his prayers are detestable. Can I say that? It's, it's so quiet and you can hear Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife always said, baby, when they get quiet, that means you gave them something to think about. All right. Amen. If anyone, Proverbs 28 and 9, if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law, if anyone turns a deaf ear to the word of God, if anyone turns a deaf ear to the commands of God, if anyone has turned a deaf ear to the commandments, if anyone has, has turned a deaf ear to God's will, his prayers are detestable. In other words, you're praying, but then it's not going to reach past the ceiling. Hallelujah. Heaven will never receive it simply because you haven't been listening in the first place. Amen. It is only once we have been truly blessed by God in the heavenly realms, according to Ephesians 1 and 3. 
Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with a spirit, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In other words, God is saying, your blessings are already stored up in heaven. The thing I like about that is this. If your spiritual ATM card has expired, Amen. if your spiritual ATM card has been fraudulently printed, you cannot slide that thing at the time of needing a blessing and expect for God to respond. But rather, since your blessings are in store, are already stored up in heaven, the way that you get your blessings is you line yourself up with what God's will is, and because of goodness and grace and mercy, God will send those blessings out according to the time that you need them or desire them the most, not just when you want them, but at the time that you need them to do what? Not just bring him glory, but to be reassured that God is still looking, that God is still approving you, that God is still happy with the things that you're doing. God will bless you as a way to make sure that you continue to be a blessing unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. So let, let, let's talk about David real quick, because I'd like to give you all this introduction. Praise the Lord. I ain't said nothing about David. <laughs> The preacher, you started off, you said, David wrote this for a reason. And now you're talking about everything but David. <laughs> but David wrote this simply because when the writer, or when you look at it in the commentaries, talk to you about why he wrote it, I want to share this with you. That's just one reason that solidified him writing this. Are you listening? One reason was because the Bible says that at this time, watch this. When God called David from out of the field and put him in position to be prepared to be the king of Israel, you got to remember that God didn't put him in position without first preparing him while he was in the field by himself. Amen. And folks said he was just in the field with them old sheep, and we know sheep don't say much. Amen. <laughs> well, I said, sheep don't say much. Amen. <laughs> but not these sheep. Sheep talk to me back in here, sheep. <laughs> Come on, amen, she, we don't need no guys this morning. Just somebody tell you that. So listen, he was out there doing his assignment, but he was in good communication with the blessing. Amen. And being in communication with God at that time allowed him to be prepared for what was coming. Because what was coming was far bigger than what he was doing in the, in the field. And God gave him glimpses of what he was going to do for him when he killed the lion and the bear with his bare hands for messing with God, with what God put him over. Are you listening to me? In other words, if somebody came up in here right now, Pookie and Day Day and Ray Ray and, and, and Eminem and, and, and Peanut and all of them and, and Lucius and all of them, if they came up in here right now, I'll fight them to the end oh, if they came and let them they keep them from messing with what God has put me over, which is the sheep here. he will have to take me all the way out in order to mess with one of y'all. But I need you to know that if they came up in here that kind of way, God has already prepared me. It ain't a weapon that I need, but it's my faith in God. It's not no, no gang of people, but what I do is access the power of the Holy Ghost to do what? Stand against the wiles of the enemy to allow them to know. Most of the time, it ain't even a fight. All it is is a word. And they'll have to run because they understand that the power. Listen, because when I stand in the power of God, they look at me. They look past me and see him. Yes, hallelujah. You don't believe in this folks? Can I tell you a story? In a little story, there was a man that was in an alley. And he was, being, he was about to get robbed, an old man. And he was about to get robbed, and the man pulled the gun out on him. And he said, old man, give me everything you got. And then when he looked at the old man, he put his gun down and took off running. Mm. And the old man just went home and he said, I don't know. Why? The boy ran, he could have shot me. He could have robbed me. It wasn't nobody in the alley but me and him. Mm, hallelujah. So he looked on the news, and on the way to the boy's house, the boy decided he was going to rob him kill somebody else. And he did so and and mercy now, would allow life to come into the baby and allow the baby to keep on living. Now, so I laid there blessing God until I got my answer. Now, and when I found out that God healed him on the other side, he said, what else can I do? Because if I keep on fasting, that's not going to bring him back. So since I bless God and God answered me, I'm going to get myself back in line and keep on blessing God because my assignment uh, it still ain't over but David knew I did wrong but when he blessed God God forgave him and put him back where he needed to be I need y'all to know 
when you bless the Lord at all times. It doesn't matter where you've been. It just matters where you are and who you're doing it for. Can I get a witness in here? You ought to make up your mind that rather good times or bad times, good days or bad days, happiness or sadness, feeling good or feeling bad. Oh, on the mountaintop or in the valley low, when I am oppressed, depressed, broke, or don't have much spare change, when I'm disappointed or when I'm glad, when my body is sick and reeking with pain, when the kids are doing everything but what is right, when I lost my child, when my car broke down, when God get up, when I get a promotion, when me and my family is healthy, when God is opening up my doors for me, that's a good reason for me to bless the Lord at all times. I'll bless him on the mountain, and I'll bless him in the valley. I'll bless him in the city, and I'll bless him in the fields. I found out that when I bless God, all I'm doing for is I'm being thankful for the things that he let me have, and I'm being thankful for the things he kept me from not having. I'm being thankful that he kept me from danger seen and unseen. I'm being thankful that his hand is still upon me. I'm being thankful that God is still the great I am. I'm still thankful that God is a still way maker. When I bless the Lord, I'm being thankful that he still loves me. In spite of me, I, when I bless the Lord, I bless God simply because there's some things that he want to do that I ain't even got to yet. But when I bless him, and I To my blessing, have I got a wind here? Can I get one somebody to just stand on your feet and say it does not matter what it is I'm going through? I will, I'll bless the Lord when I feel like it. I'll bless the Lord when I don't feel like it. Hell may break loose, but I'll way through. Lift up my hands. Lift up my voice. Lift up my praise. And do like David. Be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of living waters. My circumstance will not move my praise. My problems will not stop my praise. My it will not stop my praise. My ends in my house. It won't stop my praise. When folks don't like me, it won't stop my praise. Scandalize my name. It won't stop my praise. Tell me I can't go into church no more. It won't stop my praise. Take my Bible. It won't stop my praise. Lock me up. It won't stop my praise. If I lose my family, it won't stop my praise. If I lose my health, it won't stop my praise. Because I got it in my mind. I got the power to praise my way through it. I got the mind of King David. I will. I will. I will. Have I got a witness in here? I will. That means it won't stop. Bless the Lord at all. I'll 
his honor and glory. The reason I bless him is because as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. I, I, the reason I bless him is because I ain't worthy of the things that I got. But I got him because of his grace and his mercy. The reason why I bless him is because I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But God said, death, get on back and behave. I could have been locked up in jail for some of the things that I've done. But when God says, that's not the place that I have for your assignment, he blocked me from having to even face the court systems because he had bigger for me than what I was doing at that moment. If I ain't got no reason, if I go and pencil my story, I've almost been killed two or three times. But my praise when I was little and didn't know what my praise was, I stored enough up because my heart was still pure whether or not I understood it or not. Because I was exposed to it growing up. But I don't know about y'all, but I had a praying grandmother. And I had a praying daddy. And even when it didn't look like I had it together, all they say is, God, keep your hand on that one right there. Because they got potential, but I need you to keep 